Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. A couple of things before we jump into the questions from last week. First off, Erin is here, but we're just going to do audio today instead of video. We've been trying out different um, formats regarding Aaron the last few recap videos, but he's still not feeling 100%, so. Close, but not, yeah, just it's not quite there. It's hard to film yourself when you're not feeling 100%, so anyway, I was just gonna let you know that. And second thing, we will probably be skipping posting a video at least one day next week. I'm helping with the uh, design of the windows and the construction of all the props for the windows down at the garden center for Christmas. It's a little bit more involved. It's it, it's a project that takes a little while and I kind of want to be able to enjoy it. Usually when my mom, sister and I get together to do something like that, we like to work on it and then go stop and have a coffee and it, you know, that kind of thing. We kind of like to make it an event. In order to do that, it just takes more time. I am filming it though, so we will be able to show you um, that in the end. Also, it's raining outside, which I was hoping to plant tulips this afternoon and I'm gonna have to do something different, I think, because it is just a muddy mess out there at the moment not complaining because we just spread all of those amendments on the grass so rain is just kind of help, helping push it all in it's great all right so let's just get into the first video it was failed gingerbread some plants and camera issues basically a hot mess it was just one of those videos that i kind of considered like should we even put this out because it just it misses the mark on so many levels. First off, the recipe that we did didn't really relate to gardening, and I usually try to make sure I'm utilizing ingredients from my garden since this is a gardening channel. And then when I actually got to the gardening projects in that video, the camera shut off for all of it, <laughs> basically, like for all of the planting part. And so I just was, yeah, it was just one of those days, but you guys seem to still enjoy it, so thank you for that. Uh, Denise said, many life lessons, perseverance, Benjamin's tenacity, humility, camera fail, but most importantly is love. I adore you all so much. That was the top comment on the video. And that's kind of the flavor of the comments I was reading and that was just really encouraging to me because I think all of us have days like that. I have them often. Um, and not all the time am I filming everything that's failing around me, but you know, it's just life. <sighs> Sometimes it happens in video projects. <laughs> Stephanie said, how do you blow out your irrigation system? I don't know what to do with mine. It's with an air compressor, a yeah. big one. If you don't know how to do it, I would probably hire someone. Um, you can just Google like sprinkler blowout in uh, in my area, and Google will probably give you some landscapers that do it. I think a, it's really common. A lot of landscapers blow out sprinklers. Yeah, yeah, it's just like a, you a can do it service. yourself with a compressor, but it's, it's we tried. Of, we went and bought a compressor and everything, yeah. and then one of the guys who was you know mowing our lawn at the time watches the videos, and he saw the compressor we bought, and he was like, nope. <laughs> that's not gonna blow all the water out. So he showed up the next day with his big compressor and he was like, I just, I can't watch that video and know that you probably still have water left in your lines. Like, that's awesome. However, when he came out, there really wasn't There was much. some. There was a little bit. Yeah. But I still, I still kind of believe in our area, you don't really need to blow out all the water. You just need to blow out most of the water. So it doesn't expand to crack the yeah, pipe. Yeah, because if it's full of water, it'll expand and crack the pipe. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, if you have just like, a little bit at the bottom of a pipe that can freeze and I don't I don't think it'll do anything it was nice though I mean it was peace of mind for him for Darren yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean like he could go to sleep that night knowing like our sprinkler system was fine and that he did a nice thing and that was a tremendously nice thing yeah. but anyway we do have Benny who does our sprinklers and you know puts our sprinkler systems in. he comes his crew comes and uh, blows ours out and they did it this last week so all our all of ours are blown out except for our frost freeze we have water with those but anyway uh, Shandra said, what do you do with the dirt after you're, you are done with it in containers? A couple of different things. If I have noticed an infestation of any kind of bugs, it goes in the garbage can. Like we don't want to perpetuate any kind of bug issue here. If it seems clean, if you have the space to spread it out in flower beds or spread it out anywhere, like, I mean, we, we've spread out quite a number of pots, soil from pots in the South Garden throughout the years. I mean, even when it wasn't ours, our neighbors let us kind of utilize it as a spreading area because it's all good. I mean, it's all adding back in to the earth. Patty said, what did Benjamin think of the gingerbread? I know I certainly have forgotten ingredients on more than one occasion. That's one of the things that the camera was shut off for. I had him take a bite. He loved it. He loved the whipped cream a lot. He liked that whole process and the whole the camera was off for the whole time we were making the whipped cream. I put it on the cake. I plated the cake and we missed all of it. <laughs> Such a bummer, but he enjoyed it. I think in his mind, he was thinking gingerbread house. I tried to explain that what we were making was not a gingerbread house, that we would do that in December. I think in the end, he was still kind of like, 
Where's the house? Where's the <laughs> yeah? Where's where are all the candies? I think he was excited for like the gumdrops and things like that. Anyway, now he knows. <laughs> Diana said, "I cannot find a fluffy arb. Can you order some this size?" The nursery that I shop at had no idea what these were. As a matter of fact, I went to two nurseries. I know Proven Winners sells them direct, but can you order them in this size? Can you? Have you ever? I mean, I know you can order them. I just don't know what size. Maybe if you can yeah, get them I in a five-gallon size. Yeah, you can get them in that size. Um, Not all crops are the same, though. I mean, like one year's crop in a five-gallon size can, it'll have the five-gallon size root ball. The plant may not be quite the same shape or size. It just depends on the year. Um, and I think roots is kind of the thing that you're looking for, you know, a more established root system. Um, anyway. Probably just need to find a garden uh, center that, that can order from them. multiple sources. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be finding a garden center that just has their tried and true, like, you know, they're bringing in all the old varieties mm -hmm. that they have for years. Right. That's kind of what probably what it comes down to. Um, Fluffies, though, is, is uh, one that I have seen at garden centers, though. So it's not, I don't think it's one that's necessarily hard for them to get a hold of if they've got good growers. Another option, if you don't want to buy them online, um, you could go to Proven Winners website. I think there's a, like a dealer, kind of a dealer locator. You can put in your zip code and it'll give you within a certain mile range. And I don't know, you might be able to spread the parameters out of how many miles away you want to go, but um, it'll list garden centers that carry their product. But, you know, it's a kind of a, you don't know exactly what product because they are all subject to what the growers will offer. Not every grower offers all the, all of the varieties. Well, and sometimes what will happen is like a garden center will, will work with a certain grower and then get burned by that grower for, for whatever reason. You know what they I mean? They didn't accept like a, I don't know, they sent <clears> a crappy <throat> looking load and yeah, it, could it be. happens. But maybe like that's the grower that does a lot of the proven winners you know, plants. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, well, I don't buy from that grower because they burned me one time. So, you know, you could have a situation like that. I mean, like, proof winners plants get around. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of growers that grow them. Yeah. Next video was getting a start on decorating the garden center for Christmas. Typically, like for the past few years, we have filmed a video when I go down and help for a day um, decorating, and that's what I did. Usually, we wait until the day after Halloween to start decorating for Christmas um, because we don't want to push it. We never wanted to push it too early. Uh, but the holiday open house for the garden center is always the weekend before Thanksgiving, which only gives you a couple of weeks. Um, and that's that's not a lot of time to get an entire store decorated and changed over and cleaned for Christmas. Uh, and then not to mention like the influx of plants that you get the week of the open house. You get all your, not all of them, but the first huge load of poinsettias and Christmas cactus, all those things. You have to have your stuff set so that you have areas to put your plants. It's just kind of one of those things you have to be on top of. And then as many of you know, my mom had back surgery a couple of months ago. And she's doing really well, but still just moving a little slower because she's wanting to be careful. And so we started one week earlier this year, which I love. Like I have two trees set up in my house already, fully decorated, loving it. Uh, and I'd like, just like to be able to take my time and enjoy it because it happens so fast. December goes by so, so fast. And it's so much work that you want to have it up and like actually be able to enjoy it all the month of December instead of just like be just finishing up with your last thing right before Christmas and then have to take it all down. You're also like, a, it goes down like the day after Christmas. Or the night of Christmas. Or the night of Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I, I take it down fast because I'm done. Like yeah. by the time Christmas is over. Well, my dad's birthday is New Year's Day. So we have New Year's Eve and then my dad's birthday the next day. And it's just like, it's a change of, it's a change of season mm -hmm. for us. And, you know, I'm getting ready to do seed starting and all of that. But it was a super fun day. Um, I tackled kind of a blue and silver and white area that was kind of nativity themed and I never know what I'm going to be given to decorate with um, so that's always a little bit of a challenge as well I feel like that tree could have used more ornaments oh in I think fact, it looks great I, in fact I think that um, they were able to add more because you never know until you get all your trees set you don't want to take too many for one tree you want to make sure it's all kind of dispersed but so many of you guys have bought things online that I think they're going to have to reorder <laughs> they're going to have nothing left on the trees by the time the holiday open house rolls around so thank you for that I'm supporting my parents that way it's really sweet Kim said, this video, I love when you let us in your personal life. I completely understand why you might be selective. You carrying Samantha Grace on your hip, you wearing white. <laughs> uh, we're white today, I don't know why. Cocktails and pizza, I have no idea why this brought me joy, but it did. Your last couple of videos were just so everyday life and I loved every second. And that's kind of, once we get to late fall, winter, it kind of happens more that way because there's just not as many big projects going on out in the garden. So I just kind of bring you along for whatever it is that we have on the docket for that day. 
Uh, Nancy said, where do we go to purchase these lovelies? Andrewsseed.com. There's two S's in there. It's Andrews and then seed.com. Brian and Natasha said, love seeing the Christmas decorations, not related to this video, but have you considered in-floor heating for the Hartley? A more budget-friendly option to heat the space, you can run an electric system or a water-heated system, but both are more efficient than ducting and sounds like they would be much cheaper to install than the quotes you're getting. So the heat is not the expensive part, it's the, it's the air. Like, there's a lot of options for heat. You know, we could probably put a floor heater in there because we don't get that cold around mm -hmm. here. Um, we can. It happens, but it's not a consistent. Yeah. So it's not the heat that's a problem. It's it's a system that can do both. So it's a system that can uh, cool it down when it's 100 degrees for over two months. And not that's cool hard. it down all the time, but just a system that can cool it down at all. You know, I was thinking about that system, though, and how it would, much harder it would be in, like, the south where it doesn't get cool. At night. At night, yeah. it, even in, you know, the depths of summer when it's 105 during the day, it might be 70-something or 60, high 60s at night. So it drops, like, 40 degrees almost every single night, and that helps out a lot because it does take a while for, for things to heat up so it doesn't tax the system, like, 24-7, right. um, which is in our favor as well. Carl said, do you sleep or have a life? <laughs> do you have a family with small kids and a husband and still do decorating and YouTube videos every day? Well, as many of you know, we do have help here. You know, I have Paul outside to help me with outside projects. We bring in um, additional help for bigger stuff. Like we'll have a couple of guys out helping dig dahlias once we get ready to do that. I wanted to do all the bulbs myself this year because I can this year. I'm not pregnant. Last year I was pregnant with Samantha Grace and I could hardly do anything at this point because I had three ribs out of place and it was painful. And so just being able to, like the feeling of being able to do it myself, is help, very helpful, but um, I don't, you know, it is our job too. You know, that's what we do every day is we make videos. Um, so it's not like I'm going off and working a full-time job and then doing all of this on top of it uh, because this is our job. Do you ever sit back and think like, whoa, like this is weird. What we do is weird. Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. All the time. I sit there and I'm just like dumbfounded that you like, and I went in our here? backyard yeah. and I think our first video was that succulent wreath. Oh, our first, nope, our first video, oh, we, yeah, yeah. we were like, nope, not doing this. We ended up packing it in, not even what filming. What was your project? What were you trying to do? I don't even remember. We I were remember down at the garden center. Table. I wore sandals, which was dumb. I dropped something on my foot. I was feeling very vulnerable. I did not want to do it. And... Well, it's one of those situations where you think that being on camera is easy until you get in that, that position and all of a sudden you just like freeze. And yeah. you don't know what to say. It's like that when I have to speak in front of people. Like many people think that I can just easily get up on a stage and talk to several hundred people. And I can't. I mean, I've done it <laughs> poorly. People think I'm going to combust. I get so like sweaty and red and just so nervous. Oh my word, so hot. Um, it's a, yeah. It's a vulnerable thing, opening yourself up. It's just crazy. I, I, yeah. Anyway, that's a whole different subject. Muffin Dog said, thank you for all your videos. Quick question, on your sign-off message outside, there's a vine all along the outer edge of the white wall. What, what kind of vine is that? That is a Virginia Creeper. Mm, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> so many people are triggered at this <laughs> I know. moment. Virginia Creeper, we actually sell. I have one I'm gonna plant on our orchard fence. We love it. Um, it is not invasive here. It will spread, but it's super easy to pull up. It's not some. It's not a garden thug. You know, some um, types of plants want to take over and they are enormously hard to eradicate from your garden, like blue dune grass or mint. Those kinds of things, they just spread like wildfire. Virginia Creeper, it'll creep along and like root into the soil, but you just, yank it back it's super e way easier to pull than like a buttonweed uh, and beautiful um fall color beautiful little berries on it i just love them we had one on our pergola back there and um, that was one of the things that i knew i was going to miss seeing was seeing that kind of drapey vine dripping off that pergola it's so beautiful um so i'm excited to have one to plant uh, and that virginia creeper on the wall has been there as long as i can remember as well it's just been there forever Michelle said, what happened to the ribbon? Love to see I'm not the only one who gets excited to get started and forgets things. I um, actually didn't forget it. I did mention in the video that we needed to go get ribbon for the tree, which we were going to do. And then I decided that I didn't want to do ribbon. I'm kind of like, I have done ribbon on both the trees in my house and I figured out a different way to do ribbon that I like it better than in years past. Um, and I think every year it's just a little different. Sometimes you feel like doing things a little bit more clean and sometimes you want a little bit more fuss. I don't know. I just decided in the end, after I looked at everything that was going to be in that display, and I decided, 
there's gonna be like those huge big silver ornaments and I didn't really want ribbon to take away from that so uh, Jill said Laura where did you get your white quilted top that is a so how do you say that brand Mar marmot it's not this one it looks very similar um, Marm M-A-R-M-O-T hmm. it has like button, buttons it's dirty right now I got some kind of socks on it <laughs> I dripped on myself so I got to do some spot treatment on it and get it clean uh, next video was planting 8,000 bulbs in the orchard. The sun is starting to peek through. Ah, it's going to be blue skies in a minute. We're going to have to throw a shade up, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, in that video, Aaron got the tractor out. We tilled up big areas in the orchard, and then I just tossed. Well, Benjamin and I tossed bulbs, and then we were able just to punch them down in the ground. It still took, um, I don't know, in all, it probably was a day, a little less than a day project. It was probably like a six hour project for me um, in total. Way better than planting 8,000 bulbs like with a single auger or having to hand dig oh, the holes. Oh, that would be the worst. So it went really well. And it's a mix of, um, there's like blue squill, striped squill, um, chianodoxa, there's a rant, uh, winter aconite. Crocus, Spanish bluebells, snake's head fritillaria. Um, area. Am I missing? Oh, and muscari. It's going to be gorgeous. And there were some questions, and I, I don't know, maybe Aaron grabbed the question, so I'll wait till the end to answer the question that I saw. Uh, but Margaret said this planting is going to require a place to sit and just gaze at the beauty, a place to dream, and a place to rest. Yes, we are planning on several different areas out there, making them into seating areas. Uh, Create Stuff said, there are studies suggesting that underplanting orchards with meadows of native and beneficial insect attracting flowers versus grasses both increases pollination and decreases the need for spraying. Yes, I'm not gonna do like a lawn. It's not gonna be super thick with grass. I do want some grass out there. Um, and then I will be tossing other seeds for flowers in there as well. It's just gonna be a process um, and it's gonna probably evolve over time. Uh, Karen said, do you have any problems with squirrels? Squirrels will eat any bulb I put in the ground. They also have, have been known to eat my hostas from time to time also. Uh, you know, we haven't had a problem with squirrels up to this point. I have noticed a squirrel, one squirrel in our yard this year, and we used to have them when we had the row of oak trees. We had squirrels. They never bothered my bulbs, though. I think it's because the oak trees produce so many acorns that they never were, like, hungry enough I guess I don't know our neighbors though you know the ones with the really beautiful bank of trees over there on um, the other side of the south garden they have lots of squirrels so I don't know we'll see what happens out there because we are getting closer to where their habitat now is Diane said I have planted some of these same bulbs the woodland blend bulbs are very short do you think they will be visible when the fescue grass is at its full height love your videos you saved my sanity this last year and a half uh, you know the type of grass we're putting in there the RTF we're gonna be mowing it a couple of times a year and one of the times will be in late fall so that through the course of the winter it'll be just very short in there and it, the bulbs will have plenty of time because they come up so early they'll have plenty of time to come up and bloom and look beautiful we'll be able to see them before the grass takes off and starts growing once it gets warmer so I'm not super super worried about that Stacy said how did you determine how many bulbs to order excited to see it in bloom you know on the woodland blend actually on all of them it'll tell you how many bulbs to plant per square foot um, and I kind of figured out how many square feet we have in the orchard and I knew I didn't want it to be you know a solid mass and it would take so many more bulbs than what I put in there to have it be solid I just want like here and there pockets of color which is definitely what we're gonna get out there um, and have it be more sporadic and natural looking so I just kind of took that number I can't even remember how many like tens of thousands of bulbs I would have needed for that space and I reduced it by like a, to a quarter I think I think maybe a quarter of what I needed I think it'll be perfect and most of them will naturalize I'm hoping uh, Donna said okay did I miss something after the blooms are done and the heat of summer arrives what will this bed look like weeds will be knocking at the beds door will you remove the bulbs after blooming we will not remove the bulbs after blooming they will stay the grass will start to grow we'll seed that in the spring uh, this year was the first year we had that space kind of open and um, we took care of the weeds this year and really roved a lot of the noxious ones out we will still get weeds in there this next spring but we've got it on a zoning system to where we take care of air 
areas uh, once a week, every area gets looked at. So if you stay on top of that zoning system, the weeds shouldn't be a huge problem. And once you get past kind of the initial boom of spring weeds, typically you've got a really good handle on it and it's never as big of a problem throughout the rest of the season. Sarah said, very smart. I love the idea too. This will look so great next year. How will you get to the trees though? I didn't notice any paths left to be able to go up and collect fruit. We will be mowing paths in there um, and things will just kind of move around naturally on their own. I wasn't too particular about where all the bulbs landed. Uh, when I was popping them down in the soil, you probably didn't see it because it was sped up so quickly, but I scooted some out of the way where I knew uh, we were gonna be either having a trench for the sprinkler system or having a mode pathway. So I don't think too many of the bulbs will be damaged. Nikki said, how sore are you after that job? I'm so excited to see these in the spring. You know what? I was not that sore after that job. I was way more sore after using the auger to dig 320 holes to plant all the daffodils later on after that project happened. I don't even know, is that one in this? I think that is in this uh, lineup of videos. Yeah. 320 holes with the nine inch auger will make you sore. Next video was spreading fall fertilizer and soil amendments on the lawn. It was just something actually on Aaron's list. And we decided we get quite a number of questions about how we treat our grass, like what we put on it, when we do it. Uh, we thought it would be a good opportunity since we were putting three things down. We put down the winterizer, lawn winterizer fertilizer, gypsum and soil acidifier. And we kind of explained why we do all of those things and when we do what. Erica said, hey guys, how's it going? My husband downloaded your soundbite and made it into my ringtone when I was out of the room. He thinks it's hilarious. Oh my word. That's actually really funny. That is funny. Barb said, just curious why you wouldn't fill in the low area where the water settles in the South Garden. Won't you have to deal with that all of the time now? It's looking really good. You've kind of talked about it a little bit, but we, you know, we only get a gully washer like that, like twice a year, maybe. Maybe twice a year. We like just maybe not even once a year maybe not it's not something we're gonna have to deal with all the time i'm not worried about it i don't think it's worth the effort of trying to bring in more soil because we already have the sprinkler system where you know it needs to be mm -hmm. um yeah it's i think it's totally fine i'm not worried about it at all me either not worried about it i don't think that the water is gonna i don't think we're gonna have any pooling water going forward mm -hmm. I think the only reason that we had pooling water is because it was like semi-compacted in mm -hmm. that area um, and it had nowhere to go. But now that the roots of the grass are starting to kind of like aerate that uh -huh. soil, I think it'll just, it'll just go right through. Yeah. Shana said, could you please update us on the robot lawnmowers? We're not using them. They just didn't, they didn't quite give the versatility that I was hoping for. In terms of blade height? Yeah. The, you couldn't adjust the height, although they do have other mowers, but... Um, but you have to get different mowers and they're not the ones that I have and you can't exactly just go down to the Husqvarna store and say I'd like to swap this out, please. Right. So you're kind of you're kind of hosed once you get so the you, wrong one Really? Yeah, you just want to make sure that you know where you you know typically I, set your mow height But I also height. wasn't all that impressed I, like I I want the versatility of being able to mow high and short uh -huh. so I, I want just more more variance in the I thought they did the a great job cutting the grass. It always was like trimmed. And well, yeah, but the, the lines really started to bother me. The lines became more and more pronounced. As I as I moved the blade height higher and higher, I started noticing that the lines were really pronounced. Probably because like, the wheels, the wheels were making yeah, more of an indent. If you're mowing really short, if you have a type of grass where you can mow really short all the time, probably wouldn't notice it. Just be kind of like, you know, like a golf grain mm -hmm. or a fairway. But yeah. So anyway, we're mowing. I still haven't sold them. I need to do that. I need to list them. Probably next spring is when I'll get the most amount of interest. So if I didn't have a husband that was so enthusiastic about lawns, I would probably, I would use them. I really? Would. Like I am the, I am the market. Sure. I am the, the person that they could sell to because I thought they did a fine job cutting the grass. I don't mind the lines at all. And the fact that it was always working and it was never something I had to think about. Well, it wasn't always was so working. Nice. Every once in a while they'd get stuck or I'd like go under out the there. fence. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like stuck under the bottom of the fence. <laughs> but you know, you get an alert right away yeah. saying what happened. So you can go out there. And it was few there. and far between. It didn't seem And like. certainly the amount of work to go out and like, get the lawn mower, you know, unstuck is way less work than mowing it yourself. Right. But if you kind of enjoy mowing it yourself, you know, like we've talked to your, your dad, he still cuts his own wood. Mm -hmm. And to me that just, it blows my mind that he cuts his own wood, but he likes it, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't, if some, if it's a hobby for somebody, it's work to me, but it's a hobby for him, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Kind of like gardening. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> All gardening. 
Katrina said, how frequently do you use the gypsum? As often as we can. Three or four times a season at least. Well, yeah. Or that's we, ideal. For the grass, yeah. we're, I'm pretty bad about getting it on there. <clears throat> if I get it on once or twice, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> if I could do it four times, you know, I would. But yeah. there's also the expense factor of, yeah. you know, putting things of on there. Of all things, though, gypsum is probably, like, you can get big 50-pound bags for, like, relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of other things. Yeah. And it is helpful. Connie said, would you put on lime? Never. We would never put lime on our soil here. We are so high pH. Lime is something that helps bring pH up. Um, so we put sulfur on. Any kind of sulfur or aluminum sulfate, something that brings a pH down, that's what we're looking to do here. But um, So I know people like on the East Coast that have very acidic soil, they'll use lime instead to bring the pH up more closer to neutral. Um, so we just have the opposite problem. Brenda said, what do you spray for weed control? I live in a new subdivision and have been pulling weeds for three years. I do not see the light at the end of the tunnel. That can be tough. If you want to use a spray we have used uh, there's two different ones that we use this this year extensively we use the lawn weed brew um, they're both captain jacks they're both for organic gardening and then we use the dead weed brew which is a non-selective so it will kill both grass and broadleafs um, broadleaf weeds so you just want to be careful which one you're using depending on where you're using it and always mix it like if you don't buy the I wouldn't want to say don't buy the ready to use but if you're if you've got noxious weeds buy the concentrate because you can mix it at a uh, stronger ratio and it will help kill those stronger or those uh yeah stronger weeds the ones that are harder to kill you need a, a heavier duty application mix. yeah well and it says in the little instruction manual when you buy it on every package it gives you the rates of what you can mix it at uh -huh. and it says you can do like you know three ounces per gallon or up to like 12 ounces per gallon mm -hmm. so pick, we mix at the high rate pick the higher rate yeah because we're dealing with uh, bindweed and uh puncture vine which are tough you can certainly start at the lower rate and see what happens, but don't. Ah, uh, no, it's don't. a waste. <laughs> yeah. It's a waste. Just do the higher Just rate. Just do the higher rate. Uh, Larry said, "Poor Aaron. Hope he's doing okay now. Probably regarding the drone accident. Yeah. It like chop, chop. Like it chopped one of your fingers twice, and both of your fingers twice. Yeah, actually, one of them three times. Really? Well, four actually, as I'm looking at it. Uh, They're three, doing. They look well, a lot four, better. Four, technically, four times on both both fingers. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, they're they're growing back. I've noticed that they're growing one of, back. They're growing back. Well, <laughs> they I've, healed. I've noticed that the nail on one of them, because I think the the nail is actually what stopped it from going all the way through. going all the way through my finger. Um, but I've noticed that the nail is starting to yellow a little bit at the end. So that'd be funny if I lost my nail. <laughs> it would not be funny if you lost your nail. I lost my toenail one time after hiking. Remember that? Oh, I do remember that. You got like heat heat exhaustion or heat. Whatever. Yeah, I did. And then you stepped that on That was like a separate issue, though. That was a separate issue. Well, maybe issue. I stepped that on my toe probably day. because of the heat exhaustion, because I was yeah. just having a hard time picking up my feet. That was a long time ago. What was yeah. that, like 15 years ago? When we were very first married, I think. Yeah. Like the very first summer after we were married, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was such a terrible trip. I don't think you've ever gone hiking with my family since. Nope. No, he won't go. That's <laughs> funny. Um, I remember getting to the, to the, what do you call that? The, the peak? No, it was... What's that called? We got to the lake. And I just, I remember getting up there and being totally just like, this, this is what I hiked for. <laughs> it was a little desolate. And just like, I remember thinking, I've driven to places so much prettier than this. <laughs> like, I understand if, if there's a place you got to hike to that's like, oh, this is just, it's gorgeous. The only way you can get to it is by hiking. I think, though, the joy in, in a lot of it is the hike, part of the hike, seeing the different, the, you know, there's the meadows that you walk through and... I guess. Yeah, but you, know, but that that you don't enjoy the that whole, part. The work versus hobby. Yeah. Because it's like I'd rather just go on like a like a like a walk somewhere. <laughs> on a flat <laughs> surface that's preferably paved. <laughs> Um, I, the rest of that one was, I was wondering, where do, uh, you were riding in the back of the gator to open and close a spout. Do you have to wear a mask or a face cover? I probably should. Like, don't. Although you're driving away from it. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really deal with much dust. Benjamin was back there with me for the gypsum part of it, I think. And we weren't getting any dust at all. I mean, I would not have our three-year-old son in there if it was like fertilizer dust everywhere. I mean, I can do what I want with my own life, but I would protect, you know, his for sure. Um, seems like a lot of dust flying around. There was, but it was, again, out the back of the gator. Is the fertilizer, fertilizer stuff okay to ingest? No, I mean, nothing like that is great to ingest. Um... And it goes on to say, I guess if it's all natural, there's no danger. Not true. I mean, natural stuff can still not be great. 
because you're moth. So definitely. It's not like it's toxic though. Well, I mean. I mean, you're not supposed to eat it. It's it's like inedible, obviously. If we were like you were applying it and then like cruising right back through the dust cloud, I probably wouldn't want to ride in the back of the gator. Yeah. I think you just got to know what you're doing. It also is like I mean, your, the amount that sounds of exposure. Bad. It's not know what you're doing. I think you just need to know your job, the project you're working on, mm -hmm. and if you're going to be doing something that inc requires you to be right back through it, then maybe wear something for sure. Uh, Joe O said, just wondering why you couldn't mix all the bags together and do one pass because everything is at a different uh, broadcast rate. Um, like you have to set the spreader on a different rate because everything's a different size. That would be awesome if you could do that. And we didn't really mention that in the video. We but... did. It just didn't make it somehow. Oh, I, I wonder if there was an issue you, with the audio or something. It probably. Well, it just comes down to like, you just got to read the bag. And yeah. just, like everybody's got a different spreader and mm -hmm. they're using a different product. So you just, you have to line up whatever product well, you're using. And... Our spreader wasn't even listed on the bag. So it's one you just have to like know what you it usually looks like. You have to compare whatever spreader you have to whatever spreader is on the bag. Mm, I think they're all so different. We just kind of eyeballed it. Yeah. And then set it based on what we thought it should come out at. And that comes from years of being like using a push behind spreader, which that's what I used at like 100%. I did most of our fertilizing everything on our last lawn. When I was a kid, I used a drop spreader. Oh, really? That's the worst. Yeah. It takes so long to yeah. use a drop spreader. Dang. But at least you know you got a real good application. Well, I would get lines though. <laughs> you, you serious? Yeah, I would. I, I remember um, when I was mowing lawns, like that was my business. Yeah. When I was 15. Um, I fertilized a couple people's lawns and then I went back like the next week. And there's like big tufts and then I'll... <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what it was. Speaking of that, my dad was using some kind of weed killer at some point along the way, but he wears like PVC boots when he's out there spraying. And uh, I guess like the tip was probably leaking and you know, just like cruising through the lawn and there was like lines of dead grass. Oh, how funny. And then there was footprints too. So at some point, like he had walked back through what he had sprayed probably right. in the pasture and then walked through the garden. And so there was like my dad's size footprints <laughs> going funny. through the grass. Okay. Uh, next video was planting a bunch of beautiful daffodils. So I got out here one morning this week. It was a really beautiful morning. It looked like winter. It looked like that gray steel kind of like day. It was, it was not super cold though. So it was a great day to be out. I used the auger. I had a few different augers out there, like the, the three and a half inch, a four inch and then the nine inch. And I thought if I could, since it's so open out there, if I could just use the auger to dig a bunch of holes and put five bulbs, bulbs in each hole rather than just one per hole, like it'll go so much faster. And I do think it did go faster. It took me, um, so I started at 11.30, ended at 3.30. I took a half hour lunch. So it took about like three, it was at three hours, three and a half hours. Yeah. Four hours minus a half hour, three and a half hours to do 1600 bulbs. That's not bad. I was a hurting unit after that though, because that, that constant motion, the nine inch auger is almost too much for me. And I can handle quite a bit out in the garden, but it's a heavy machine. It gets the job done, but our soil is very hard pan out there too. And it can tend to want to throw you around a bit. Um, so you have to be like really, um, stiff kind of is that right like you have to use your core a lot which i don't use my core very often <laughs> i have found but you like you have to really like kind of bear down and like i don't know that's probably not the best anyway uh okay uh helena said every time you say serbian spruce my heart melts because i'm from serbia and i can't believe that something from my country decorates your beautiful garden i hope it will serve you well in the coming years I'm sure it will. It's a beautiful. I love Serbian spruces. I have two out there. Would love to have more. Drew said, have you thought about moving the fountain from the triangle garden to the cut flower area since you plan on reworking the triangle garden area anyway? That way it gives you a little more freedom when it comes to that redesign. You know, I probably won't move it to the cut flower area just because that area is so big. It's going to require a big basin fountain, like something pretty good size um, to be the right scale. But I can, I am like open to moving that fountain anywhere. Uh, I do think that incorporating that triangle triangular shaped garden into the back garden will be a good move um, just to help facilitate traffic around the house and not give people opportunity to like accidentally back into any of our plants or things like that it happens too often around here um, that we're trying to make sure that we've got really clear directions we're gonna put up signs we just have to I'm just I am blown excuse me I'm blown away at how bad people are at driving I know like just stay on the lane our right? lanes are wide it, it is wide everywhere Well, maybe that's the problem maybe that they're too wide and so people think like oh I'll just do like a 20 point turn and then turn around <laughs> in the middle of the lane as opposed to just like keep going you know yeah I don't know 
Uh, Susan said, curious if you will plant bulbs along the new brick walkway that leads to the house. A mix like you did by the fruit trees would be beautiful. It would be beautiful and I would love to do something like that, but I still haven't reshaped that, that flower bed. Um, right when I was done with it, I knew it needed to be bigger, kind of in the middle of it. I knew it needed to be bigger, but I just decided, you know what, let's just clean it up how it is now and then later I'll come back out and make it bigger. So once I get it to the size I need it to be, I'll probably start incorporating some bulbs in. Strong Cup of Tea said, what color will the exterior walls, roof, and interior walls be on the shed? Uh, will you be doing any cover cropping in the cut flower area over the winter? I can't wait to see everything start waking up in the spring. You should be so pleased with everything you've accomplished in 2021. And we are. We're very happy with everything we were able to do. Uh, the cut flower shed will be white. Um, it will match the rest of our building so everything looks cohesive. Um, the interior color I'm not certain on. It will be something bright. It'll be something light and bright because I need to keep it airy and uh, kind of like the sun porch. I need it to, con I mean, white contrasts green and plants just so well. Um, so it'll be something like that. Anyway, and then cover cropping, we will start doing next year. I just didn't get to it in time. I probably, I was talking to my dad about it actually the other day. There's still a couple things I could maybe put down, but he just said I would wait. So anyway, I think I'm gonna wait. Ooh, now it's gonna get overcast again maybe for like two minutes yeah. or less. That's really nice on the eyes though. Whew, yeah. We're a break. JJ said, good day everyone. Maybe this question has been answered. In early spring, do you wait for the bulbs to come up first before planting other spring and summer annuals and perennials? Or do you instinctively know where to plant your other annuals and perennials? I don't instinctively know. I mean, I know somewhat where everything is at and I will occasionally run into a bulb, but we dig so many of our holes with augers. It tends to just pop the bulb up out of the hole. I rarely damage a bulb and then I can just replant it really close by. And sometimes I even plant it right next to the root ball of whatever I'm planting. I'll just slide it right in and then put soil over the top of it. Um, so it works that way. I mean, ideally you would be putting your bulbs in after you have everything set in your flower beds. You've got your trees and evergreens, your shrubs, your perennials, you know where everything's at and then you can kind of do your drifts around it. I love it. Like we had one section in that South garden where I had daylilies and I put some daffodils in the, that area and it was easy to do. And I knew that because I could see where all the plants were and I knew it wasn't, they weren't going to be disturbed ever because I've got everything set, but it's just not the reality for a garden. The size is going to take a long time to kind of get everything in place and get things going. And I don't really want to wait that many years for bulbs. So we're just kind of going backwards, doing things in reverse order, I guess you could say. Heidi said the flower shed will look so cute with a living roof. I think it would add to the whimsy uh, of the orchard and its meadow with some moss and sweet little flowers as ground cover. Uh, you know, I love the idea of a living roof, not on that structure because that one's just kind of out there and it's gonna be pretty good sized roof. I have thought about doing it on something else though. Like I almost did it on the tool shed, remember Erin? We were looking at that little tool shed we had and we, I talked to you several times about doing a living roof. Hmm. At some point on something, we're gonna do a living roof. Okay. So that's, that's a thing, add it to the list. Julie said, can't wait to see them in the spring. I noticed you don't use your kneeling pad anymore. Is it just too much of a hassle? Yes, oh, kneeling pads are such a hassle. Um, so I use, usually use one that's just like a kneeling pad that you move around. Uh, knee pads, I hate wearing knee pads. They hurt my knees more than they actually help. And they like really annoy me and we're going around my legs, like mm -hmm. back behind my knees. Oh, I can't Start stand sweating. that. Start sweating. Yeah. Uh, and you know, out there, especially like when I was doing the orchard bulbs, all that soil was so fluffy, like that was the most comfortable planting I have ever done ever. Uh, and then, you know, the mulch layer, like the wood chips are real spongy and real nice. And so I haven't like had any knee issues or had my knees hurt just kneeling straight on the ground out there. I will use them if I'm using, uh, if I'm planting stuff in a, a, an area that we've mulched with something that's kind of splintery. Those are the cases where I will like go to the effort of using a kneeling pad. Heather said, going forward, do you think you'll always plant your bulbs using your larger auger? It looks so much easier. It was, it was so much easier. And if I have the opportunity and the space to use the larger auger, that is the one I will use. Uh, I have tried the trench method, like digging up large areas and then like laying all the bulbs out and then putting the soil back. That is not an easy way to plant bulbs. I don't know what people are thinking when they say that that's easier. I've tried it several times, but like removing that much earth to create a space for bulbs is so much harder than using a, just an auger. I would rather use an auger and do single holes than I would rather than do the trench method, but the large auger was kind of a game changer for me. That's, I mean, it did make me really sore. So like there's the trade-off. Feeling sore like that though, every once in a while is not a bad thing. Kind of feels good. Like I just worked 
hard. Last video uh, was organizing around the greenhouse and prepping potted plants for winter. And that was another video that I did. I just had that on my list of things to do. And I thought, you know, we usually don't show that area, like our plant stash, what we have back there for projects. Um, sometimes because I like things to be a surprise. I like for you guys to see what, you know, we have planned when we actually get to the project. But it's such a reality of so many of us. I've seen so many uh, questions from you guys lately, really, of um, plants you've picked up on clearance at the end of season at garden centers, and you're like, I don't know what to do with these plants. I, I wanted them because they're such a good deal, but I don't know how to winter them over. What can I do? And I thought it might be helpful just to see how we winter in what we have left over at the end of the season, which I've already picked a bunch of stuff out of that stash and used it in other projects since I did that project just a couple of days ago actually. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna have to kind of reorganize and re put things close together once we move bags out. But I also needed to clean the whole greenhouse area, rake it up inside, uh, organize the tables, a bunch of tables and spilled out the front because, you know, we needed them out of the way when we did the heating project on the greenhouse. Deb said it looks so good. It looks like it only took 15 to 30 minutes. Um, so yeah. It took about three hours to do that project. And I don't know if you guys would enjoy hearing or would like to know how much time it actually takes me. Like I did mention in our daffodil video, at the end of the video, how long it took me to actually plant all of those because we do so many of our things sped up and all that organizing was sped up. Um, so anyway, I'll try to make a mental note that that's something that maybe I should include. Uh, Nicole said, all the other GA regulars sitting here as Laura asked, what did I pay for those? I know it was cheap, yelling 40 bucks at the TV like me, raise your hand. So many of you guys commented that. I, I was so surprised by how much you guys remember. Well, I cannot remember details like that. Ken was able to go back and grab that footage from when I picked those up and it, they were $39.99. They were wow. marked $119.99 and they are so big, you guys. I got them home. Two of them worked really well by the chicken coop. I was thankful for that, but those three are massive. Like. I tried to put them in pots and the pots looked, and the pots were big, but they looked so minuscule in those pots that I just ended up, I potted one of them back in its original container. I think they're just gonna have to go out in the ground somewhere. Penny said, I'm trying to analyze what it is about GA that we all love so much, and I think I hit on it today. It's your complete lack of stress that is so encouraging. All those plants sitting there, I would have to have been panicking and stressing and not enjoying. Uh, but you just relax and take it easy and know that you have confidence in your own ability to winter them over, and if not, you still don't choose to stress. That is such an encouragement to me to keep on gardening. And you guys, that seemed to be a really common theme in the comment section, and I'm really happy. I did not expect that video to give you guys a sense of ease about um, what you can do with your plants because you know nothing is foolproof in gardening and I think working down at the garden center really was helpful to me like a form like my formative years I guess gardening um, it made me realize that you know these things are replaceable um, there, I don't know, there's there's a lot of other things in life that are more important than the plants that we have in our garden. Although we love them and it's our passion, it's what we love to do and we do pour ourselves into it. And it does make us sad when things um, either die or don't work out or whatever. But I've had to kind of learn to roll, you mm -hmm. know? And also I think when you come from a garden center background, you also realize the uh, crop mentality of all of these plants too. I mean, plants are grown as crops to sell. Um, it's kind of like, you know, plants like, you know you grow your corn and it's a crop that you take your plant your food from and you eat it and then it goes away for the year and you plant them again and a lot of things like christmas trees are also grown as a crop you know they're just not harvested as often and so you get a little bit of a different mentality on how things work and you know the how you can replace things you can't replace the time you put into it though so i see all the sides of that i don't know you have any thoughts on that i think you nailed it I mean, could I stress, could I stand to stress a little more in life <laughs> about things? <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think it's a good balance because you don't want to, you don't want to stress too little and be just super wasteful, right. but you don't want to stress too much to where you don't get anything done. Or to where it takes so much enjoyment out. Right. If, if something goes wrong, you don't want it to completely take the wind out of your sails and make you not want, yeah, not get anything done because of it. Yeah. Um, I'm also an incredible realist. Uh, I I used to be able I used to get my hopes up a lot more about a lot of different things, and I think I was disappointed a couple of times, not in a big way, but um, just in a certain things that didn't work out or whatever. And you know, in retrospect, I'm super happy that everything has happened how it has. Um, but you know, if we have an idea for a big project and it doesn't happen, 
I don't know, or like the Hartley. I know that so many of you guys have said, oh, I would be so bummed if I couldn't use it this winter. I'm totally not bummed at all. Because <laughs> my real, like the realist part of me knew that it wasn't gonna be ready. And just being able to look at it and see it looking beautiful out there, I'll pop a Christmas tree in it and that's perfect for me because it gives me actually more time and gives me a sense of um, ease and relaxation, knowing that I don't have to make so many decisions mm -hmm. and possibly possibly make the wrong one. It gives me time to think about things. And I think that that's beneficial. So anyway, uh, Holly said, organization, the, the nearly most satisfying of all jobs. Once you get started, that is, that is true. It's just like that in, uh, initial getting into it that can kind of be tough. Question, are pots okay to be left out unfilled over winter or are they best to be filled for protection? Um, you know, it's best if you can put them under cover somewhere, cleaned out. Uh, if you have to put them outside, tip them upside down. That way things won't um, collect in the bottom. If you are going to tip them upside down, though, and you have a surface that's maybe not super soft, put a, like a burlap sack or something underneath them that protects the rim. Uh, Sin Zim said, love this, very satisfying. Might you store some of your large pots in the greenhouse underneath the tables? Such a good idea. I think that maybe we should move some of those inside because then they would be clean, dry, and ready to use if we want to pot anything up like late winter, early spring. They'll yeah. get wet underneath the tables though, right? Well, there's nothing okay? underneath the tables right now. Well, didn't you say dry? There's nothing on, uh, there's nothing on top of the tables. Oh, sure, sure, like sure. Like you just pick a table and that's where you store all your things and do all your plants on the other tables. Sure. I think you'll uh, fill up the space with plants though. Well, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Brittany said, Laura, will you do another milk jug project this winter? You better believe it. Yes, for sure. Milk jug, um, winter sowing your seeds is probably one of the best, easiest ways to sow seeds. You don't need grow lights. You don't need special equipment. It takes very little maintenance and they're super strong when you plant them out. The thing I did differently this last year, which I will repeat. So I use gallon sized water jugs and instead of seeding so heavy, I did five five little spots so the four corners and then right in the center and when I went to go plant them out this spring they were so easy to pull apart and I didn't have to deal with like shocking plants because I was ripping their root systems apart so I will do that again which means that if you want more seedlings you do need to have more jugs but you can clean them out and use them from year to year so it's not like a waste thing or you know having to buy so many more plastic jugs it's just like um, you know collect the ones that you use throughout the year and then you can clean them out and kind of grow your stash and the last comment was from Judy. I was really surprised you have so much stuff stored behind the barn since it is a three bay with upstairs. Did the root cellar and studio take up the space where you used to keep a lot of these things? Yes. Any storage sheds or barn addition in future plans? Not really. Uh, I mean, we're always talking about different ways we can store things, but yeah, the, the loft in the barn is totally full of seasonal things like Christmas lights take up almost an entire wall. Well, Christmas does between my in-house decorations and Christmas lights for outside, it's one whole wall. And then the other wall is like hay racks from the, the fence project with all the liners. I've got like all my canning supplies. We've got um, aqua, we got a ton of aquascape stuff in there. Yeah, um, that Greg, Greg sent. sent like three pallets worth of stuff. He's like, just keep it in case you need it. I, I don't even know what all of it is. I don't either. I mean, we should probably go through it. Yeah, we probably should. I've got Ask my, him. It's probably valuable stuff. Yeah. I've got my mom and my bicycles up there. We have bikes here that we will ride down to the uh, coffee shop. We need to do that this fall on a nice day. Um, just stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of the stuff in the back of the barn, it does look tidy though when we have it organized. And there, I did see a comment and I, I didn't see it to grab it, but I, I read it at one point saying like, no wonder your neighbors put up a their shed back there to block all the junk behind your barn. That, that fence line, it's not seen by anybody. The stuff behind your barn is not seen by any of our neighbors, if, even if there was no sheds back there. Um, so it's actually a really great spot for our neighbors to put their RV. They have another shed that has a lot of stuff that looks a lot like ours. Um, and that, that one's directly behind the greenhouse. And um, yeah, but it does get kind of junky during the season. It will look a lot better here pretty quick. It yeah. looked a little bit better after this video, but we have some work to do yet. But I was just saying that because nobody sees it. Their house is the one that's like, you see it out Versailles, like it's out a ways <laughs> and it faces this way and our barn is way over here um so anyway we wouldn't purposely junk up an area somebody could see i hope that everybody knows that <laughs> anyway i think that's it for today's video any other wisdom that you want to add anything that i forgot go plant a tree yeah maybe it's so nice now i can't even believe it 
thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you're having a great day and have a great week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.